Hello viewers, here is a set of Clarity Professional Telephones. This is model C4230. I believe it is a 5.8 GHz model. Here's the informations. This one appears to be made by the Plantronics. Unfortunately, it does appear to also be made in the China. I don't have a lot of experience with these Clarity products. I have another model that's similar to this. It's a Deck 6 model. I think I showed it recently. It's this one. And this one is also um, uh, made by the, the Plantronics. There's a couple of other Clarity models that are currently on the market still, I think. And those appear to be made by the Advanced American Telephones. Those are not labeled Clarity Professional. Those are just Clarity, for whatever difference that makes. Although it doesn't say it on here anywhere, I do believe this set is 5.8 GHz. Some kind of digital, probably. I don't know if it's digital digitan spread spectrum or not. Perhaps we'll have to look in the manual to find out. These do have belt clips uh, capacity, but I don't have the clips themselves. The headset jack uh, doesn't seem to stay closed correctly. A neck loop option. Intercom tones. This is the the volume control which apparently changes the ringer if it's on standby ringer on off physical switch per handset it takes this outrageous battery um, it's got the two terminals in there it's a 3.6 volt battery and I bought the Kastara brand which is unfortunately made in the China and I have bought this brand a couple of other times because the cost of it is significantly lower than some other brands. And they seem to make almost every model under the sun. There was very few different options for this particular battery pack. Most of them are over like 15 or 20 hours a piece, which is crazy. And the Kastar was the only one that was a reasonable price. And so I bought them. In the past, I have not had good experience with the Kastar batteries. They've been deplorable. So, hopefully these will be okay, because if they're not, I think the only other realistic option is to make a battery pack. I think it's a standard 3AA size. I don't have another one on hand here. Uh, oh, no, wait, I do. Yeah, this is a standard 3AA pack, so it is the same size. Just be a matter of making those contacts. Anyways, that's one of the problems with these, with older phones, is that it's getting harder to find batteries. Now this is saying battery low, and that's very concerning. I'm hoping it's just because I took the thing out and and it wants to have its initial charge again. I did notice that the screen kind of flickers or not flickers, dims rather a little bit when you press a button. So that's kind of concerning. I, that does really lead me to believe the battery is not working correctly. And I'm not terribly surprised given the previous experience with uh, Kastar. Anyway, so let's begin by calling these up. Not sure what they're going to sound like. I don't know if it has the talking call ID or not. We will soon find out. Okay, and it's not working. What did I do wrong this time? There it goes. Click two of them and do not have the... Huh? Was that the greeting? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty comical. I think that was the greeting. A 
It seemed like two of them. That I gotta really need to, to deoxidize the switcher. See, how do we turn that down? Okay. So it looks like one of these did not have the visual ringer on. I suspect that's probably a setting. It still says block number. That is flashing, indicating we have a new message. Visual ringer is off. Okay. This one appears to have the touch tone off or it's broken. Don't see that option in here immediately. Hmm. Now the speaker definitely works. That's got to be a setting somewhere. I have to say, for being something designed for the visually impaired, the screen is very small as far as the font size goes, and there's it, there's just so much text on there. It's not at all intuitive or easy to see. but it's not outrageously loud. Same thing with the handsets, a decent volume, but it's not exotically loud. Got a good range of different frequencies in the ringer. There are keypad tones. I don't really see that on the other one. It's under a ringer setup, that's not very intuitive. Is it recording already? Goose, 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 one, two, three. Another memo. I don't know what that does.
Oh, it's talking. To turn off or on, press 5 to record new memo. Press 7 to repeat menu again. Goose, I just listened to the memo, or not the memo, the message list thing uh, audibly. It's getting late, I gotta go to sleep. You have four new messages. New message. One, Monday, 12.15 a.m. The recording already? New message. Two, Monday, 12.15 a.m. Goose, goose, goose. One, two, three. New message. Three, Monday, 12.15 a.m. Another memo. New message for Monday, 12.15 a.m. Goose, I just listened to the memo, or not the memo, the message listing uh, audibly. It's getting late, I gotta go to sleep. End of new messages. It's not very intuitive that this doesn't also function as the select key because it I would keep wanting to go there to make a selection. Monday, twelve fifteen AM old message one erased old message two Monday twelve old message two erased old message three Monday old message three Erased old message four old message four erased end of messages Looks like we went through the entire battery charge already. It's not good. Not good at all. I guess it really is just somebody fidgeting with the phone. going on here? The base seems to be screwed up. Now it's working properly. Okay, let's delete that out of there. Please 
retrieve your message after the tone. Okay. Okay, let's record a message. This is a test message to see how the playback speed works. I'm speaking at a fairly normal rate right now, and I'll play this message back on the slower and slowest settings. Okay, so I'm going to slow it down now. Quite a bit slower. Let's see what the slowest setting is. The slowest setting. You have one. Old Should have slow down the voice too. Old message one Monday twelve twenty one a.m. This is a test message to see how the playback speed works. I'm speaking at a fairly normal rate right now, and I'll play this message back on the slower. Actually, that works pretty good. It preserves the pitch quite well, and it's still as clear as it was at normal speed. This is back to normal again. You have one old message. Old message. One Monday, 12.20, a.m. This is a test message to see how the playback speed works. You have one old message. Old end of messages. You have one old message. Old message. One Monday, twelve twenty one a.m. This is old message. One Monday, to old message. One erased. End of messages. Answer. 
off. Enter on. Okay, the page feature doesn't seem to work. Well, I think it's into registration mode or something now. That's kind of strange. Huh. Okay, there we go. We have to set a certain handset. Contrast on this hands that is awfully high. Let's see if we can fix that. The buttons also aren't working too good on this handset. Too small, I can't press one of them at once. There we go, that's much more reasonable now. Okay, let's make some outside calls. Call the Farmer Jones cold line. Oh, it's on pulse. Greetings from Jones Family Farm, where we're out the pumpkin field with the vineyards and the Christmas trees. Very busy working on all our crops. Our strawberry and blueberry season are now far behind us, and we so appreciate all of you who helped us bring in the harvest, making them a successfully safe season, following all the guidelines, the reservations, and social distancing. These experiences have helped us plan for our pumpkin season starting near the end of September and Christmas tree season soon after that. We have already had this a few experiences in upcoming seasons, and I'll reference that near the end of this message. Currently, the winery is a great activity. Has a very for poor automatic gain control. The winery is located at our homestead farm, one of our three Jones Farm locations. The winery is open Thursday through Sunday from 11 until 6 at 606 Walnut Tree Road in Shelton, Connecticut. Curbside bottle sales and pre-order pickups begin at 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. And you can pre-order online in advance on our website. Jones. Jeez, that was awful. Now this is tone one. We got a couple different tones here. On, on our website, again, that's JonesFamilyFarms.com. Our tables are located outside and have limited capacity, so please consider reserving early. Details are on our website regarding table sizes and other aspects for reservation. Doesn't make much of a difference at all.
That's quite loud. Uh, again, tables are limited in capacity, so consider reserving early. The website has additional details regarding reservations for the music, the time. Uh, we have a friend of the Winery Loyalty Program for returning guests to accrue points towards future purchases. We have discounts for bottle purchases and a changing variety of specials for bottle sales during the summer and autumn. Although the drought this summer has been a challenge, we have numerous irrigation ponds to draw from, and this helped us grow a very healthy crop. We look forward to seeing you and your family. I think that only makes a difference of its own boost. It's a collection of pumpkin squash and gourds. We farmers have put a lot of work into creating new... Huh. Okay, let's just speakerphone. That's pitiful volume. ...is that reservations will be a requirement to visit during pumpkin season. As we have learned from prior crop seasons this year, it simply helps us manage the number of people visiting the farm at any one point in time. So we're out busy in the fields and doing our grape harvest in the vineyard, and if you do need to speak with us, you can reach us at 203-929-6237. Leave a clear message. Mm, we'll that's not too bad, to but it's call. very... Uh... Make it a delicious day, folks. Very, oh, very, wow. very tinny on those other three tone settings. It's loud, but it's not much louder than a decent, regular cordless phone. Okay, ran out of time, so we'll call it again. Oh, it's still on pulse. That's weird. I wonder if the dial mode is set per handset. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense, but I don't know why this one's on tone. not a bad speakerphone. It stays clear in a full volume. More reservations. Uh, live music occurs on Fridays, and there's only one Friday of music remaining as we prepare for the fall daylight hours. Uh, table reservations for that Friday music start at 4.30, with music beginning at 4.45, playing until 6.45, and the evening ends at 7 p.m. on the Friday. Uh, again, tables are limited. Okay.
Okay, so they all seem to work on the incoming side. I'll go ahead and record some testing messages now. All the testing messages have been recorded. Six new messages and 27 old messages. Message one. This is the base speaker phone. I'm speaking about two feet away from it. Now I'm speaking up very closely. I'm not exactly sure where the microphone is on this thing. Okay, now I'm stepping back yeah, halfway across the room. Uh, I don't know if it's even picking up or not. I'll find out momentarily. Message two. This is testing handset number one on talk mode. One, two, three. Now I'm going to put it on speakerphone. Okay, it's on speakerphone now. Still speaking closely. Now I'm going to put it down the table. It has been set down on the table. And standing up okay. I'm about a foot and a half from the handset. Now I'm about two feet away from the handset. About a yard away from the handset. I'm continuing to move back across the room. So this will tell us base speaker phones seem to have a pretty good pickup, but I was not at all impressed with the pickup of the handsets. So that seems to work. The base was a little flaky at the beginning, but it seems to be alright now. And the batteries are flaky too, potentially. I need to let them discharge and charge up a couple of times to give them a completely accurate test. But I'm not too confident within the batteries based on my previous experience with this brand. So that will conclude this video. We'll have some more videos of this set to come. Thank you for watching.